The headline is clear. The U.S. House of Representatives has impeached President Donald Trump. Now, while the U.S. Senate seems certain to keep the president in office here at home, the political impact is most keenly measured in the effort by Xochitl Torres Small to keep her seat as a Democrat in the 2nd Congressional District of New Mexico. Now, Ms. Torres Small voted yes on the articles of impeachment, and that's where we'll start our line discussion today. Joining us, we have line regular and principal of the Garrity Group, Tom Garrity. Diane Snyder's here. She's a former state senator and line regular, also with us. One of her colleagues in the state's upper chamber and another line regular, former state senator Dee Dee Feldman returns. And rounding out the table, line guest Dave Mulryan, founder of Everybody Votes. Thank you all for being here. Tom, Representative Torres Small was in a bind, certainly. What do you make of how she presented the case for her vote? And I'll remind, she penned an op-ed in October, late October, sort of hinting where she was going to go here with this vote. How was it handled at crunch time, though? Well, you know, she did what she, what in her heart she had to do. Right. And, uh, you know, this, the second congressional district is a very tricky district. Uh, it has traditionally in recent history mm -hmm. uh, been controlled by, you know, the Republicans, uh, Republican Party. Mm -hmm. um, there have been a few blips in that particular uh, scenario where you have seen Democrats be very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I think it was just the, it is, it is a step. I don't think anybody's surprised or shocked by it, mm -hmm. uh, but it is something that is, uh, uh, you know, to be taken into consideration once you get past the primary period, especially mm -hmm. for depending who the Republican is. That's a very good point there, and Didi, you know, interestingly, we look back at the history of the district, recent history, <laughs> she went to Trump by 10 points, right. and Romney won it against Obama by 7 points. I mean, this is the thread the needle Tom's talking about here. Oh, so yeah. again, the same question, has she handled this in a, in a way that could work out for her politically? Well, I think she's a real profile in courage. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the Republicans are already attacking her anyway. Mm -hmm. They've spent $350,000 on these ads that we've all seen. They've been going for And a they're going to continue yeah. no matter how she voted. And so I think she voted her conscience and I think she did the right thing. Um, some of us may remember Harry Teague, uh, who mm -hmm. was oh, a Democrat yes. who <laughs> was <laughs> in power for two years yep. uh, after the Obama sweep. Mm -hmm. um, and he had a he had a moment too, and the moment was whether to vote for the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. And he did not vote for the Affordable Care Act, and he was defeated anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I suspect uh, that that was on uh, Sochi's mind as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but doing the right thing uh, to me. Um, is it has its own rewards. It has its own legacy. Hmm. Um, and I think that we should be proud of her for doing this. I like that. It does have its own reward, doesn't it? It's a very interesting observation there. That's very cool. Senator, I mean, we're talking about protecting a seat here. She's now super vulnerable. She had to go there, as, as Senator Feldman mentioned voter conscience, but now the real fun begins. And so, how does she defend at this point? I, I don't think she has a way to defend other than standing up and saying, this was what my conscience told me. She has to very clearly separate herself from Speaker Pelosi, that Speaker Pelosi didn't con her into doing it, okay. that, that, she has, that she was independent. This was her decision to mm -hmm. make. Because there's a part of me that uh, when she won, mm -hmm. I looked at her and I listened to all the commercials she had had and the things she had said, and I said to myself, this may not be too bad. She wants to work independently. She has publicly said mm -hmm. uh, and she, uh, that she would work with the president and any, anyone, Democrat or Republican. And she had some pretty good ideas, uh, certainly not conservative views, but ideas on the border situation, mm -hmm. which is yeah. so, so much of her, yeah. her district. And I there. just thought right. this may be, end up being okay. And now, to me, everything that she's done well, like like the medic, uh, the prescription drugs, sure. and uh, the border, the not, it's, what are we calling it nowadays? Anyway, the well, that's was a bipartisan yeah. bill that she sponsored right. to enhance technology right. and scanning and, devices right. but at I, the border. My that's point right. is, I'm so afraid that's going to get lost. That the whole campaign will be attack and her vote right. on impeachment yeah. instead of us really discussing 
issues. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave, when you think about it, her own timetable, she held as long as she could. She was not a wild-eyed, right. Trump's got to go, talking right. last summer or yeah. even before right. that. You know what I mean? Right. Like she, Deborah Hallam. It, or like, you know, it just, it did. Does, does that help her at, at, in any you know, you know, I think that, look, she is, you know, a, a, a member of the Democratic Party in good standing. She was going to vote for impeachment. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that what the Democratic Party should do is it should be well organized down south. There's like 12 or 14 counties down there. It's a huge district. It's enormous. The, the, the yeah. payback should be we'll provide you with volunteers and we'll provide you with a strategy. But also Democrats have vulnerable um, candidates in a number of congressional districts. They need need a message that can work, that can say, mm -hmm. yes, we voted for impeachment, but you as the Trump voter vote for me because I felt this was the right thing to do. Are the Democrats capable of coming up with that message remains to be seen, but they should not wait. I mean, we should have the message. We should get the message out. We mm -hmm. should make sure that we have, mm -hmm. you know, all of the things that a political party should provide to these candidates who voted their conscience and may be vulnerable because of it. Do mm -hmm. not wait too long to do that. But you know? demographics mm -hmm. may be on her side. Absolutely. Demographics as time goes goes on and redistricting right. occurs right. may be on her side. Right. Doña Ana County is growing. Right. Uh, that's where the Democrats are. Um, and uh, that may help and, her and, a lot. And, you know, when the young voter has pretty much been clear, Tufts did a, Tufts University outside of Boston did a study. 67% of the first time voter in the 2018 midterms voted Democratic, no matter how they were registered. So knowing that that demographic bulge is there, they should play to it. I mean, there's no question. Mm -hmm. Those are her, uh, the, that's where her assets lie in yeah. the young. Mm -hmm. You know, anticipate a question I have for Tom. When you think about it, the national scene, people have hardened by the polls, you know, from impeachment yeah. Yes. Those who were opposed, still there. Those who were, you know what I mean? Each, no, no side has moved. I'm curious where CD2 is at. I'm not asking you for an answer, but I'm, I'm right. you know what I mean? I, I, it, do you think it might trend with national polls, or is it more fluid down there as we're you talking? Know, then? Great question. You know, I think when you look at where the national polling is on right. the issue of impeachment, it's basically you have that 50-50 divide with about 10% in the middle. Right. And I think you know, research uh, will, will give you the kind of uh, results that you go out to find. Right. Uh, <laughs> and so you know, as you kind of look at well you know, the, the larger question is really what's going to happen with that middle voter, that independent, uh, that moderate. That right. conservative um, Democrat. They are really, yeah. I mean, so so they are right. really not interested at all in the whole impeachment narrative. In fact, amongst those, according to Gallup and McKinsey, mm -hmm. two, different, two, two different polls looking at two different groups, um, really have identified that that moderate independent voter is really disenfranchised by the whole impeachment discussion. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily lean, leaning right or left, yeah. but just said, you know what, we're tired of it. Right. And we're actually seeing it also in the coverage from the news media. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember when, um, you know, the, the last impeachment uh, with uh, with President Clinton, mm -hmm. um, you had all the primetime shows that were you know all news ABC News, NBC News, CBS. They all had primetime analysis right. of what was happening. Yeah. Instead, after the uh, after the impeachment vote, uh, you had things like. Um, Ellen's Greatest Night, Survivor, and yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, I mean, it's Once. funny, but it's really sad <laughs> because three of Three stark examples, yeah. right. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, but she so was able to pull those conservative Democrats that yeah. traditionally yes. vote Republican mm -hmm. in, in that district. And that may be where she loses some of the vote mm -hmm. that she got this last time. You know, Didi, I'm, I'm curious, uh, to follow what Senator just said there as well. Um, is she her own thing down there? And what I mean by that is, I'm starting to, when I consider she's to her small, I just feel like she's her own sort of entity. It's not she's hard D or, or moderate D. She's just her own person, her own she thing. Is. You know, she, she uh, arranged a field hearing there oh, on yeah. border well, issues. That oh, was yeah. a huge deal when you think about what might come out of that conversation. It almost seems like she's carving her own thing oh, out down is. there. I recently got a Christmas card mm -hmm. from her and Na her husband, Nathan Small. Oh, yeah. And it was out in the middle of a field. <laughs> and uh, those, those two are real Westerners, and they have also some rural values that are not fake, uh, but they are uh, actually in their blood. Right. And I think that what she does with the rural-urban 
issues mm -hmm. down there is really a key thing in terms of appealing to some traditional values. Yes, they may be conservative, uh, but they also have elements of, um, you know, individualism, progressive <coughs> self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. And I think her and her husband it really embody those values. Mm. And I think the more they can play on that, and sp and as she's doing with rural health care, rural health care is, is really is her that. issue. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, she is, it wasn't just a TV ad, but yeah. she was, she's working on it uh, and in a bipartisan fashion. Mm -hmm. Dave, one last question for you. What I put me? Here. Oh, Cook Political Report says it leans Republican by less than six. Well, the so other thing, opportunity there. Uh, yeah. Some, I mean, for a Republican, I should say. I mean, we have two okay. points we have to remember. Donald Trump did not visit New Mexico for his health. He has said, "I'm going to put New Mexico in play." Mm -hmm. We should pay attention. I mean, the man is very good at telling us what he's going to do, and he always does it. Mm -hmm. So I think that could have reverberations for Sochi. But the other thing to sort of counteract that is, let's not dismiss the economy in the South is booming. I mean, mm -hmm. I happen to know this because I was trying to buy billboards down there, and you can't even buy a billboard. Oh, wow. And because yeah. the oil companies are so busy, it actually lawyers were buying all the billboards for workman's comp cases. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, the billboards were full. American I mean, Americans. and Sochi gets credit for that. That is a booming economy. Yeah. And, and so, you know, do not discount pocketbook issues. I Glad you got the important. point in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. In just a moment, we talk to two of the stars of the Frontline documentary about the only bank to be prosecuted after the 2008 financial crisis. Now, when the line returns, we're talking about a rough year for chili pepper growers.